Hello. I recently had a client ask me if they should. Uh, so they had heard from someone, they had been in like an accelerator program and someone in that program, someone contacted them because they were in that program and said, um, hey, I can help you raise money. Um, I'm, I'll charge you a percentage. I know all these really great investors. If you sign up with me, you know, I'll take care of everything for you. I'll help you raise money. And I hear that a lot. Um, and so I just wanted to caution everyone before saying yes to something like that. In the case, in the case of this um, entrepreneur, they're actually not a client. There was someone I was talking to about potentially being a client. And um, their gut instinct told them that something didn't feel quite right. So luckily, you know, they talked to me about it and I explained to them some of the reasons why you might not want to agree to something like that. So uh, first of all, there are legal uh, regulations governing whether people can do that for you. So if someone offers to raise, to help, to raise money for you, to go out and find investors for you, there's a pretty good chance that what they're doing could be illegal. Um, first of all, they need to understand the laws governing fundraising and they're not legally allowed to charge you a percentage of what they help you raise, except under very limited circumstances. And they often don't even know that. They don't know that their whole business model is breaking the law. And so if you do raise money in a way that is not consistent with the legal requirements, you could run into a lot of problems down the road where the whole fundraising process is subject to challenge by the people who invested. So that's one thing is just legal issues around hiring someone who claims they're gonna go out and find investors for you. Another issue is that, um, People often get excited when someone offers to find investors for them, but I think from almost every case I've heard of, it never ends up resulting in people actually finding investors. <laughs> um, and that's just because usually the best person to raise money for your business is you, you know, the founder, the person who started the business, the person who's really, really passionate, the person who really understands what it's all about, the person who has connections uh, in the industry that you're working in, someone else, no matter if they are values aligned or you know industry aligned in some way, they're just not gonna be able to tell the story in the same way that you are. Um, and investors often won't take them seriously because they're not you, you know, they're obviously just a contracted person. So I think there's a lot, people find it attractive because a lot of people don't wanna go out and raise money. They don't like the idea of having to go out and raise money from investors because it can be like intimidating. And if you're really busy, it may be the last thing you feel like doing. But in my experience, that's the number one thing you should be doing as a leader of your business is being in charge of the fundraising for your business. You should not be outsourcing it to anyone because number one, it's probably not effective. And number two, um, you lose the opportunity to get this experience of connecting with investors and really growing your skills as an entrepreneur. I find like raising money from investors is an amazing way to become kind of a more um, knowledgeable leader, you know, taking on greater leadership roles, getting over some fears and doubts you may have. So that's another reason. And then uh, the last reason is that usually the people who offer to find you investors, they're gonna have a very particular type of investor that they're planning to try to connect you with. And that type of investor may not be a fit for you. You need to be very flexible and creative about the types of investors that you bring on because if you just focus on the usual suspect investors, they may not be a good fit for you. Um, and that doesn't mean you should give up and say, oh, I can't find any investors that are interested. It just means you need to go more broad and be more creative about who your ideal investors are. When you're dealing with someone who's contracting with you to help you find investors, you're already limiting who your pool of investors will be because they have some particular pool that may not be a fit. So they could have like a Rolodex of a thousand investors 
but maybe all of those investors have a particular um, bias about what type of investments they like to make, what type of returns they're looking for. Um, that's very common because um, usually uh, they're in a certain category of investors that we call professional investors and professional in investors tend to think similarly about what they're looking for. Whereas if you go beyond that tiny group of people who are professional investors to talk to others who may not be professional investors but could still be investors, um, you're greatly increasing your chances of finding right fit investors and finding investors who will be interested in investing on terms that are um, good for you and for your business and not cookie cutter terms. So those are some reasons not to be too quick to accept someone's offer to go out and raise money for you. Uh, if you do decide to do it, make sure they have all the legal licenses that they need to do it. Uh, make sure they're knowledgeable, knowledgeable about securities law compliance. Find out who their um, pool of investors are and whether those people are even a good fit for you. Um, and don't, and also make sure that if you go out and also try to raise money, that, that will, that you can do that, that they won't want an exclusive, you know, it's fine if you find someone that you really think is good, that you trust, that's legally compliant to go out and help you find investors, but you should still be able to go out and find investors too. So make sure the contract you sign with that person doesn't say like, oh, if you find any investors, I get a cut of that as well. So I hope it's helpful. Thank you. Bye.